Welcome one and all. This is a tour of Master Audio 2.6. First I'm going to show you I have a game with no audio at all. That's not much fun. Let's add some sound. Open up the Audio Manager window, create the Master Audio Prefab, and usually you're going to want the Playlist Controller Prefab as well, which controls music ducking and cross-fading of music. Now let's go ahead and create some sound groups. Those are not categories. Categories are called buses. I'm going to go ahead and lock the prefab so I can drag in more than one sound at a time. They will each create their own sound group. There's three sound groups. I'm going to unlock it. Each one has their own volume control. Scream's too loud. Let's turn that down. Now I'm going to go ahead into the blast sound group. And it has one sound which we dragged in before. Now we're going to drag in some variations. They'll be played randomly. We want blast one, or just blast, to be played more often, so we'll increase the weight and then blast 2 we want to have a random pitch. The sum of all weights in a sound group is also the maximum number of that effect that can be played. Now I'm going to show you the buses. So for each sound group you can assign a new bus. You can type in the name down here which will change as you type it above. You can then use this bus on other sound groups as well. That way you could adjust the volume of all of them at the same time. This is very useful and time saving. Let's take a closer look at the mixer. The delete button will turn into a speaker icon when you push play in the editor. So you can audition sounds. You can also solo or mute each sound group or the whole bus. So if you have things muted, they won't be heard at all. And if you solo anything, then only soloed sounds will be heard. Here you can adjust the volume of all buses, including no bus, at the same time. Okay, everything's set up. Now we need to actually trigger the sounds. We don't need to write any code. There's a script for this event sounds. We're going to choose the disable sound. Whenever it becomes disabled, the player will scream. That'll do it. This will choose where the sound is actually spawned in the world. There's three choices. You can attach it to the player itself. Let's check that out. Does it work? <coughs> yes. Okay, now let's make your projectile make a noise as well. We'll use the event sound script again. It's very flexible. It can do a lot of different events. This time we will choose the visible sound. Sign it to that sound group. That's done. Now let's make the enemy have a sound when it is despawned. But I don't have pool manager installed, so I'm just going to use invisible sound. And that's done. Let's take a look at that all together. Most of the time, event sounds will do everything you need to trigger sounds. They are very flexible. Now take a look at the collision sound. This will happen whenever anything collides with it, but you can say, I want it to happen only if it hits something in this layer, or something in either one of these layers, and you also have a similar thing for the tags. You can say only if we collide with something with this tag, or any of the tags that you specify, one of any of them. Okay, now let's take a look at some music settings. Let's close all these. The playlist settings. You can of course lock the prefab and drag in multiple here at the same time. We have it set to automatically start and advance to the next song when the song is over. Now let's make it repeat. Now let's configure some music ducking so that any sound I specify here will cause the music to become quieter and then ramp back up. Here's the settings for ducking. They're on the playlist controller prefab. That's how much quieter the music will get when it's ducking and how long it will take before it starts to ramp back up. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, please email us or write on the Unity forums. I'm always there. Thank you.